Hello and welcome to another video from BetfairTradingCommunity.com with me, your host Martin. I'm so glad you're watching today that you're able to come join me because we are going to get into some really advanced, kind of deep level, professional style thinking when we get into our training today. And uh, we're going to get straight to it. But first, just want to mention a couple of things. Firstly, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're so close to 10,000 subscribers now. We'd love to get there by the end of the year. So please subscribe if you haven't already. It's massively important to you because you get notifications about these videos straight away. And you don't have to be emailing me, you know, and saying, Martin, uh, have you got a video on this? You'll know, you'll have already seen them, you'll be getting them, you'll be getting updated every time they come first off. But more importantly than that, what I really want you to do is sign up for our basically our 12 days of Christmas giveaway. We're giving away prizes for the next few days and you know up until I think the 21st of December which is our Betfair Trading Community Party. So again, I'd love you to join us for the Betfair Trading Community Party. That'll be at 8pm on the 21st of December. There'll be a link in the description where you can sign up for the 12 Days of Christmas giveaway. It's absolutely free and not only that, you can actually win one-on-ones with me, Ryan and Adam. I mean, you know, we're giving it away this year because it's just so great. We've had such a good year, um, both as BetfairTradingCommunity.com and just having a great time with you guys, chatting to you, getting to know you and helping you become better traders, which of course is what it's all about and which of course is what I want to get into here and now today. Um, now now this is going to be some advanced level thinking, but it's not beyond the scope of anyone who's a new trader. So don't think, oh, I won't bother watching this or I don't need to listen because uh, I'm not at that level yet. Basically, what I want to get into today is kind of theory of trading that people don't really think about or people haven't really heard much about. Because ultimately, this kind of theory is what's going to separate you. Now, one of the things I'm always telling people is don't be afraid to go against the crowd when you're trading on Betfair. Don't be afraid to go for the less obvious choices. I mean, let's think about the World Cup that's going on at the moment. It might have finished by the time this goes out. No, it wouldn't have finished. It'll be like semi-final stage. England just got knocked out, by the way, when, I'm, when I was recording this. So pretty rough time for England fans. But the reality is... All the shocks in the World Cup haven't been that shocking when you've actually watched the game. So Morocco, Portugal. Well, what did Portugal do in that game where you ever thought, wow, this Portugal team's amazing. I can't believe they're losing. Watching the game, you would just think, yeah, it's pretty 50-50, right? Morocco got the goal and they won the game. That's what happens in football a lot of the time. Yet Portugal was such short odds to win that match. And we've seen that time and time again. Spain against Morocco, same opposition, exactly the same thing. Odds on basically until late in the game. And then obviously it finished nil-nil in normal time, so there was no winner. But the point is Spain did not win Brazil have got knocked out by Croatia. Similar story. You watch that game, you weren't thinking, cool, it's only a matter of time before Brazil score. Wait. So what I want you to think about is because a lot of people can't start to think about going against the crowd. They just can't do it. In their heads, it's like, well, yeah, but I can't go against the crowd because surely the crowd's right and I'm wrong. Right? Um, you know, the bookies, they know everything, right? They've got they've got all these computer models, X, Y, and Z, they know everything. They don't. And the truth is that actually they don't really use computer models that much. They use them in terms of helping with create the odds. But what really sets the market is public opinion, is the people putting the money on the bets already. So actually, bookmakers, as much as you might think, oh yeah, it's all computer, it's not. Because a computer might tell a bookmaker, well actually this team should be favourite. But the reality is, if all the punters are going on the other team, and if other bookmakers are suggesting that another team should be favourite, they will follow suit. And watch what happens when money starts to come for someone, the odds get cut. Why do they get cut? The computer model doesn't say they should get cut, does it? The computer model still has the odds the same. The reality is they get cut because of the money coming in and the public opinion. What you have to remember is this sport of Betfair trading, a lot of it is based around opinion. Most of the people putting their money on, it's just their opinion. They're not using advanced software like we do at BetfairTradingCommunity.com to create an edge. So the reality is that's why we're able to keep creating these successful strategies that do well. Because there are, there are chinks in this armour. This is not a perfect uh, system that people try and make it out to be. So 
We're going to get into Tomaz's under 1.5 goals lays today. And because the advanced level of thinking is exactly why this strategy works, why this strategy has been making members a lot of money this year. It's probably been the most successful strategy in terms of other people following and doing well in 2022. So I think it's quite apt as we come to the end of the year to talk about it here. But what I want to show you is the fact that this strategy essentially backs over 1.5 goals. We lay under 1.5, but it's, it's the same thing. We're going for two goals, basically. It's set and forget, we let it run. So we know we just want two goals. If we get two goals, happy days, and we've made money. Okay, so I've selected it here on the filters, and what I'm just gonna do is click Edit Filter. Now, I think you should always do this. When you look at a member filter, so let's say you're looking at the Profitable Members Filters section, when you select a filter, just click Edit Filter, and you can actually see the exact criteria being used, okay? So, the first filter, is looking for under 1.5 goals, games that have under 1.5 goals, 40% or more of the time. Hey, you might be thinking, hey, hang on, but you're going for two goals. Why would you be looking for something that's under 1.5 goals? So keep that in your head because that's what we're gonna to come to in a minute and I want you to keep that part in your head. A similar type of filter here, I'll just click next to it so you can see where it is. Over full time, overall, under 2.5 goals, 65% or of the time or more. Again, another filter that's looking for less goals rather than looking for goals. Interesting, right? Home goal attempts per match average less than 15, away goal attempts per match average less than 15. Again, looking for teams that aren't having a ton of goal attempts per match. This is strange, right? So far, all three of these filters, well, four technically, seem to be going against what we should be looking for. Number five, overall goal attempts per goal average equals greater than seven. So these teams don't score on most of their shots. They're not, it's not like every couple of shots on target, bang, it's a goal. Another filter that you would not expect to be going this way. Overall full time, nil nil greater than zero. Kind of a bit of a, a nothing filter there. Um, and overall matches played equals 10, which obviously is great. And then obviously there's some league restriction and we've got restrict to current season, exclude playoffs. Okay, We don't even need to restrict to going and play matches because it's a pre-match pre -match bet. So what is it that is the reason that this strategy is making money going for two goals? Because... Clearly, it's going for something totally different. Well, firstly, let's just check that it is. Is this strategy working as an over 1.5 goal strategy? Let's go to the testing sheets. Now, Tomaz's lays are this column here, number five. You could actually look through and see the monthly results and see that actually in 10 months of testing, it's not had a losing month. It's made profit every single month, 11%. ROI. There's not many systems and strategies that can claim that. £600 profit to £10 lay stakes. It's well up. It would take an absolute disaster for it to go unprofitable from this position. If we go to the fourth tab on this sheet here, this is actually all the results individually. Now, I know a lot of you guys like to see these results and you're like, oh, you always show the front page, but let's see the actual results. Um, well, you can always look at this spreadsheet, by the way. Uh, members, it's on the members forum. I'm always plugging it. Um, it's actually higher now, look, 626 at the moment because we've had some results in December. And Denizil's spore, I haven't put that result in yet. I'll do that now. I didn't, I haven't even didn't know that result. It was 2 1. So that's another win. Three goals. Interesting, right? So, what is it that's, why is this strategy making money? Let's put that result in. Why is this strategy making money and why is it doing so well? when all the filters are suggesting it shouldn't be. This is where the deeper thinking comes in. There's one key rule to this strategy that's important to follow, and it's this. This little box here. Lay under 1.5 goals at odds of 3.5 or below. So, essentially, we are getting matches where under 1.5 goals is a short price, okay? So in that, in theory, over 1.5 goals is a big price. 
is bigger than usual. Often on these matches, you're getting around 1.5. You're getting at least 1.4 if you're backing over 1.5 goals. Well, anyone who trades over 1.5 goals will know that's actually a really big price for more than two goals in a game. Because the reality is that most games have two goals. And the fact is that actually anything around 1.4, 1.5 is a big price because a lot of the matches you'll look at, I mean, go and look at Man City's next game and see the under 1.5 goals odds there and see how basically big the under 1.5 will be and how short the over 1.5 will be where it's probably sub 1.2, okay? So 1.4, 1.5 is actually much bigger than normal. This is why this strategy works, okay? Because of the odds limit. Because we're not going, well, we'll lay at 6.0 or we'll lay at 5.0. No. Anything below 3.5 we lay, anything above we do not. And let's look at some of the typical odds ranges here. So we've got 2.52, 3.3, 3.45, 2.88, 3.3, 3.3, 3.5. So you can see that a lot of the time we're actually getting below 3.5 and often well below it. You know, we've got 2.52 here in South Africa. And what do you know? It won. There was two goals. Okay. Why is this? What's the theory, Martin? You've talked a long time explaining everything, but what is the actual theory? Okay, so here's the theory. And this is the theory that I've come up with as to why this works. Basically, if you think about it, the bookmakers do not expect goals in these matches. The bookmakers and the computer models are telling you there will not be goals in this match. Okay, what's the problem with that? The problem is that most matches will have more than one goal in football. You know, it's always odds on. That's just the reality. And most matches have that. But the model's saying that these matches won't. The reality is the odds are getting too short. See, if the odds on these were 4, 4.55, then the value would not be apparent, right? Because when you hit a loser, so let's say we hit this Pendix Spore game and it's at 3.3. Let's say the odds were 5.3. Well, we wouldn't have lost £23 to our £10 lay stake. We would have lost £43. Well, if we keep adding that up as we go to every loser, another £20 here, £20 there, £20 here, £20 there, 20, five selections is 100 quid. five losing selections. Well, we've had way more than 25 in these hundreds of results. So actually, had we been getting the higher odds, this would be a losing strategy to lay. And that's the key. The fact is the market is overcompensating because it thinks there won't be goals, but it's actually pushed the price way too low. So 3.5 or below is too low for under 1.5 goals in general, and especially in these games. And that's why we're seeing the types of profits that we're seeing. Now, it's not like we don't ever get losers. I mean, you've got a streak here, right? where we lost one, two, three, four, five out of seven games, right? And you're looking at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven points lost in those six games, right? Or is it seven? I think it's seven actually, yeah. So eleven points lost in seven games. Imagine if you'd started the strategy and your first seven games you were down £110 to £10 lay stakes or you're down eleven points. You know, would you even continue with the strategy? Because I know so many people that will just chuck out a strategy straight away. So it shows, and I love that about this strategy, that it has had bad runs, but it's recovered massively from them. And it's never even had a losing month. So even within this month of October, where this happened, October was still profitable overall, because you can go on runs like this, where you have six in a row. You can go on runs like this, or there's the September where you have eight in a row. This is the thing, that the market is overcompensating, and you will see this time and time again. So a strategy that essentially was built to find games where there aren't goals has turned into a really good strategy for backing over 1.5 goals. And the advanced theory here is that the reason is the market, because it expects no goals, has pushed the odds in way too far because realistically, you know, it's very rare, in my opinion, that the odds on under 1.5 goals should be this short. 2.5, I mean, look at this run here, 2.52, 2.68, 2.52. Well, do you know what? All three of those had over 1.5 goals. 
and they were close to evens. How insane is that on a market where we know most teams will have two goals? Even low-scoring games, even low-scoring teams. Remember, this is league football. Teams play a bit freer than they would in cup football. I would not apply a strategy like this to the World Cup or to, you know, League Cup and FA Cup. I mean, that's a nightmare anyway, because often you're trading teams that are in different leagues. You, you've got no real form to gauge and look at there. But this is the key theory, OK, is that it's so good to go against the market. But we didn't just do it randomly. So you might be thinking, that that's actually great. What you've done there is incredible. Your theory, your thinking is amazing. But I didn't come up with this. The strategy presented itself because initially it was an under 1.5 goal strategy. Tomaz created this to back under 1.5 goals. And he tested it and saw that it was losing money hand over fist and went, do you know what? And he said this to me on the forum. He said, do you know what, Martin? I think we should back over 1.5 goals. And we did. And we've got 10 months of profit because of that. That's the incredible thing. And then what I've done is I've kind of reverse engineered the strategy, gone through and looked at the theory and basically explained to you why it works. But I want you to start thinking more like that. Have you got strategies that have tanked where you can go, maybe I can tweak this, maybe I can flip this, look at the other side of the market. Or could you do something where you look for something, like let's say you look for over 2.5 goals, you put in all the filters, but you look for games where over 2.5 goal odds are really short, and then you could back under 2.5 goals. Because the reality is this strategy does not need a crazy high strike rate to make money. And that's the key. If it needed a really high strike rate, if we were laying at 5.0, 6.0, this would not make money, but we are not. Anything that pops up on our filter above 3.5, we ignore it. We go, no, I'm not trading that game. It's not in the parameters. And the parameters are everything. The odds make the value, okay? You could find a game where you go, do you know what? I really think this game's going to have over, over 1.5 goals. I'm sure of it. But what if the odds are 1.1? Are you really going to invest £10 to win a pound in that situation? Because the reality is you're probably not getting any value and the market's already telling you, yeah, we expect there to be goals. So where's your edge? Because all you're doing is agreeing with the market. This is the problem a lot of people have. They want to agree with the market. They want to go, Brazil should be World Cup favourites. They've done absolutely nothing to deserve favouritism in the World Cup. And I said this weeks before. This is not after timing. Go and watch. Go and watch the Betfair trading show. I said this live. Brazil have done nothing to deserve to be favourites of this World Cup. Yet people were tipping them. Pundits, everyone, hand over fist. People who never really watched Brazil play were telling me they're going to win the World Cup. It, it was insane. Brazil have done virtually nothing in the last 20 years in terms of the international football. They, In fact, even in their own country, they lost 7-1 in a semi-final. And yet we were going, oh yeah, well, and they came into 2-1. to one, And all these other big teams were still in it. England, Portugal, Argentina, France. France, who'd won it a few years ago, getting totally disrespected. And this wasn't just at the start of the tournament. This was as the tournament went on, it got worse and worse. And it made no sense to me. The other thing you have to learn with football is that people just... I think opinion drives football odds so much. And, you know, Man United for years was so short in every game. Even after Fergie left and they were useless for years. They are getting a bit better now. but And the odds are kind of getting towards where they should be. But for years you could make money laying Man United because every game they were short odds, everyone still thought they were the Fergie team and they were a totally different team. And you see this time and time again. Teams get overrated and you can take advantage of that as some people did on Brazil. And I told you there's no way they should have been favourites and that turned true. They didn't even get close, guys. Yeah? But public opinion, everything... So when you tell me, oh, yeah, but the computer models say this, oh, yeah, but everyone's using computer models and that's that's why you can't beat the book. It's just not true. The truth is public opinion has way more sway than you think in odds creation. And that's why you get value in these situations. Because the odds, even if the computer models suggest something's going to happen, the odds will go in further. Because the odds aren't dictated by that stuff. The odds are dictated by weight of money and public opinion above anything else. And that's the reason. Why were Brazil favourites to the World Cup? 
because these are the only reasons I can work out. Number one, they've won it a few times, okay? Yeah, but not in the last 20 years, doesn't matter. You could put that into a computer. You could go, yeah, but they've won it five times, right? I mean, let's, it doesn't matter that none of those players were in the last World Cup or even go. In fact, probably a lot of those players were barely born or not born when they last won the World Cup, right? It doesn't matter. It's Brazil in a World Cup, yeah? So you think about things like that. Now, that's one of the reasons. The other reason is, oh, well, you know, they've done well in their qualifying, their recent friendlies and things like that. Who cares? This is the World Cup. It's totally different. Brazil did not even win the last Copa America, where it's basically, let's be honest, it's basically only them and Argentina in it a lot of the time. And it was in their backyard and they lost to Argentina. Yet Argentina were not even above Brazil in the odds. Now Argentina got favourite. And I said this at the time, this isn't after time, that this is my point about the advanced theory. I know I've talked a lot today, but I've got to the point. We've talked about really important stuff. So I hope you appreciate that. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it there. But this is the advanced theory. Do not be afraid to take the market on and think for yourself. Because the problem is people don't think for themselves. They go and place bets based on what a pundit says or, or what they think looks good. Think for yourself and don't worry about the weight of public opinion. It does not matter. Because you can't turn around and go, can I have my money back on Brazil? Because every single pundit on BBC Sport basically tipped them to win it even though they probably never watched Brazil play. They, they all tip them. Can I have my money back, William Hill? Because, you know, I saw it tipped in the Racing Post or, you know, I heard it talked about on Talk Sport how amazing this Brazil team was. That's the reality, right? You will go a long way in this game if you're willing to open your mind, think for yourself and go against the crowd. All right, guys, hope you have a great week. And most importantly, I hope you make some money trading on Betfair.